much like arrays, strings in C barely exist. Let's investigate. First of all, what do we mean with string literal? Well, we simply mean a sequence of chars surrounded by double quotes. So, this is a string literal, this also is a string literal, and this also is a string literal. Now, let's find out the type of a string literal. To do that, I'm gonna leverage the size of operator. I get 16. Indeed, as I explained in my previous video, this is just a char array. Hence, we get 16 for the number of chars. We have 15 visible ones here and the backslash zero that is appended by the compiler. This is a sentinel value to tell a hey, here, exactly here, the string finishes. So given that a string is just a char array, you know all the rules of arrays, right? Here you don't have the key because we have the size of operator. So now let's get practical. Given that this is a simple array, I can stock it into a pointer, right? Because an array is gonna decay to a pointer to the first element, which in this case is just a char. So this string literal is indeed a pointer to the first element, which is this i, a char. Now, why the sentinel value appended at the very end is super handy? Well, because this allows me to know the actual size of this. Indeed, let's assume I want to print all the chars one by one. I can simply do a loop. I can do while at PTR is different from the backslash zero, which is basically the char with the value zero. Then we're gonna put a char and I'm gonna say at PTR and then I'm gonna do a plus plus. So every time I'm gonna move the needle, you will see that this works with no problem. You see, I got the string in the output. All right, this is very basic stuff. I'm sure you already know how it works. Now let's go a little in quirky land. As a C programmer, you will probably come across this string as well, namely an array in this fash. And then the array is initialized the same way, right? Now, if I print the two strings, I don't have any kind of issue. So PDR, an array, and it works, no problem whatsoever. So these two strings look exactly the same, right? But there is a core core difference. If I want to change the array in position zero, let's say, and we want to put a K and then I'm going to print again, I can do this kind of operation. As you can see, I managed to change the first char. What if I do this with the pointer string? Of course, I can use the square brackets because at the end of the day, this is just syntactic sugar for uh, pointer dereferencing. What is going to happen in your opinion? Compile and launch and I get the segmentation fault. What the heck is going on? Well, one thing that we can do is to print the actual location of these two strings. So we can uh, investigate a little about this strange phenomenon. So let's do that. As you can see, the addresses are very, very different. Let's try to go deeper. In Linux, we have this proch directory in which we have a lot of information about our system. Here you can see all the processes that are running. Beware that this directory is dynamic, volatile, namely here you can find information about processes that are alive. So if I want to investigate about a specific process, I need to make an infinite loop or a sleep or whatever to keep the process alive. So here what I want to do is to find out exactly in which uh, specific place in memory these strings are located and why this difference and why the segmentation fault. So I'm gonna launch this in background very simply with the ampersand. Then I'm gonna check the actual bit of the process, which is this one, 5755. And then I'm gonna cat the actual virtual memory map of this process, thanks to this proch directory. So I do slash proch slash the actual bit that now I'm gonna copy. And then I have uh, a lot of information. As you can see, I really care only about maps. All right, as you can see, we get a lot of information, the dynamic libraries, here you have the heap, the stack, and other places that now we don't care. Now, I want to understand where this specific address fits. So I'm gonna just grab something here. I'm gonna do a cat, then a pipe to wrap. So here I get F004, and that's exactly this range here. Now, focus very well in this. 
Now, as you can see, this place in memory has only the read option turned on, right? Is a read only place in memory. I cannot do any kind of change here. Now let's check the other string that you can imagine lives in the stack, right? So we got 74180 and this falls exactly in the stack range, which of course has write permissions. So as you can see, these two strings live in different places in memory. This string literally here lives in a read-only piece of memory. So when I want to change the first char, I will get a segmentation fault. This, on the contrary, is a string that lives in the stack. Now, let's understand very well what is going on, because if I do something like this, for example, I declare my array, let's say with 10 elements, and then I say array equal this string. What do you think? Can I do this? Well, of course, no. I cannot assign to an expression with array type. I cannot assign a value to array, but I can initialize the array, which is a different concept. This is totally valid. Of course, here the string is too long, but you got what I'm saying, right? Here, I just let the compiler understand how the string is long and everything works. Let's understand very well what the compiler is doing. Here, I have a char array and the I initialize this array with the string log, a very short string. If we inspect the assembly. Now, I, you don't have to understand what is going on, but very briefly, you have this instruction, which is a move L. To make it simple, I'm going to put in the stack this value, right? Which in hexadecimal is 6C6F6C. Look here, I have L, O, L. Basically, with this instruction, I have a move, namely, I have a copy of the actual string in the stack. You see? That is what is going on with that. I have a copy of the string. So in this case, I don't have the string lol that is saved somewhere in a read-only place. I just have an initialization of the array, namely underneath the hood, I have a copy of the actual string in the stack, and that's it. In the second case, I have a string which is very long, right? As you can see, it's pretty longish string. So the approach for this initialization is kind of different. In this case, I have a call to a function, which is memcopy, and the string is actually stored in memory, as you can see here for this very strange notation. Here we can understand that uh, I have a constant, this is a label uh, for array, and you have the ASCII chart, and this is the actual string. So the memcopy function is gonna actually copy, char by char, all the elements of this string, which is saved in a read-only place. Pay attention that here I have optimization maximum. When you have, like in this case, a string literal that it is assigned to a pointer, you don't have initialization. You don't have nothing that is copied inside an array. You just have a pointer to a string literal, which is stocked much probably in a read-only place in memory. I say much probably because this is implementation defined, aka the compiler decides what to do. So this is what is going on. I think this is the tricky argument about strings. The rest is kind of simple, I think.